Is this the whole paper? Yes. Then when I saw, how is it the whole paper? Check the pages if you have all the pages. Are we all there, guys? 2017? Are we all there, 2017? I just want us to do the note. Let's start with the note. Note number one. Can we start with note number one? Because that will definitely be in your test. And that's one thing that you did there. Note number one. Cash flow. Cash flow. Yes. Cash budget is in paper two. Yes, there's only four things in paper one. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do note number one quickly. In that paper, guys, they didn't ask for it specifically, but they asked for it in what is that? 3.2. Look at 3.2. That's what they're simply asking you to do. They're simply asking you to prepare note number one. You calculate the cash generated from operations. Guys, it's very easy. I even know it because I've repeated so many times. I've repeated it so many times, even this year. Um, it is just profit before 10. And then adjustment for. And then what do you do afterwards? You add depreciation, you add interest expense, that's it. And then you will get um, profit before cash generated from operations. In this case, in this case, no, in this case, they've done everything for you. The only thing that they gave you was operating profit before changes in working capital. They gave it to you. Oh. Net profit before tax plus addition of depreciation and interest is that much. Yes. You actually do that in the block, but you do it as note number one. That's all you do. Yes, yes. But it's just part of working. And then you're going to have changes in working capital. I've said it so many times. If inventory increases, what does that mean? We bought, it's an outflow, period. In this case, you have to look at your inventory. Look at your inventory. Inventory has increased. From 517,500 to 1,463,550. So all you have to do was just to say increase in inventory and put it in bracket, which is 946,500. It's an outflow because you're buying. If inventory goes up, it means you're buying. And guys, if inventory goes up, it means you're buying. If it goes down, what is it? You just have to, guys... Accounting is so stupid, you can pass it without being smart. That's how easy it is. If inventory goes up, it's an outflow. Automatically in your mind, guys, if it goes down, it is an inflow. You don't even need to know the reason. As long as you know that if it goes up, it's an outflow, then the opposite applies. If it goes down, it means it is an inflow. Easy stuff. And then, when it comes to trading other receivables, you just have to check for one thing. What is that one thing that you look at? 
SARS, you have to check whether you have SARS income tax. If SARS income tax is included, what do you do? You exclude it. Now let's look at our trade and other receivables in this case. It is shown separately from sales income tax. So you're going to take trade and other receivables for this year minus last year. You realize that trade and other receivables has gone down. If it goes down, what does it mean? It means people paid us. Have you watched the video? I've done this at the beginning of the year when we started in class. But you mastered this at the beginning of the year. Trade in other receivables, guys. Trade in other receivables is 944,400. That was for last year. This year it is 628,500. So it has gone down. And I said to you, trade in other receivables represents people that owe us. If it goes down, what does that mean? There's less people owing us. So what did they do? They paid us. So if they pay us, is it an inflow or is it an outflow? It is an inflow. That is why here you're going to say decrease in trade and other receivables. It is an inflow and you don't show it in brackets. Easy. And then you go to trade and other payables. In trade and other payables, you have to exclude three things. What are they? Sales income tax, accrued expense, but if it relates to what? Interest on loan. You only exclude accrued expense if it relates to interest on loan. If it doesn't relate to interest on loan, do you subtract it? We don't. And then you're going to exclude the third thing, which is what? Shareholders for dividends. And you already know that bank overdraft doesn't even go there. So let's look. We only take creditors, control, and what? And expenses accrued. You're going to take that accrued expense because it relates to what? It relates to advertising. So we're going to include them. So for 2016, you add 247,500 with 7,500. For 2017, you add 656,700 with 13,050. That's it. You add the two. And then you find the difference. Now, please add the two. When you add the two, guys, you realize that the 2017 amount is greater than the 2016 amount. What is trade in other payables? People that we owe. If we owe them more cash-wise, how does that affect our money? So we paid less. So we saved money. So it is a cash inflow. General knowledge, guys. 50% English. That's what accounting is. Now, hence here, I'm going to say increase in trade and other payables. And I will have 414750 that's it. You'll get the video. <laughs> and then you're going to say minus this plus that plus that is going to give you that amount over there. And that amount will simply be um, an outflow of 215400 And then you will simply take that 1962000 and it will be 215400 It will give you cash generated from operations of 1746610 You're done. How many marks? In this case, it is 12 marks. When they ask the full thing, when they are nicer, this will normally be around um, 15 marks, 16 marks. Yes. Clearly, they wanted you to master the format. But if they ask you the note, remember, they're not just marking there, they're also marking inside there. Practice. No, you must start the practice as well. 
Okay. Yes, you must always make sure. And I realize that in your test, and I always forget it. Now I'll speak to remind me. In your test, you guys don't show these things in brackets, and that's a problem. You have to show calculations in brackets. And the paper does say show calculations in brackets to earn hard marks. But you guys are like, ah, these idiots. That is all you were supposed to have done in this case, guys. That is all. <laughs> it's because we don't have them. But if they were there, we were going to add them. We will. We didn't need them in this case because we do have operating profit before changes in working capital. But still, Because paper one is 200 marks, paper two is 100 marks. So if you nail paper one, you are done. And next week's test will be paper two. Paper two is cash budget, it's your analysis of financial statements. Um, how do I forget them now? forgot them. Oh, your reconciliation. Oh. Bank reconciliation, creditors reconciliation. Oh. That's all you needed to do with note number one. And I did explain them thoroughly. And then we come to cash flow from generating operation, um, operating activities. It'll simply be that amount. Even if it was rubbish, you just write it as it is over there. Interest paid was given to you. How much was interest paid? Interest paid, how much is it? Interest paid is given to you on page 7. It's number 3. It is 63,000, so you write it as it is, it is a cash outflow. What about dividends? What are dividends? How much do we have as dividends from last year? Will it be an inflow or will it be an outflow? Explain why. It is an outflow, why? We owed it last year. So what must we do this year? Pay it. That's why we have 
when you look at trade and other payables, look at your trade and other payables. Under current liabilities, we have shareholders for dividends. For 2016, shareholders for dividends were 412,500. So you're going to put it as a minus because it's an outflow in the current year. Shareholders for dividends for last year. 2016, under current liabilities, shareholders for dividends. It's an outflow. You're going to pay it this year because we owed it last year. Those were final dividends from when? From last year. It's because I told you when we did shareholders. Remember those easy stuff that you said were easy? Remember those stuff? When I taught you those stuff last year, I said to you, final dividends will not be paid. That's why we take them to trade and other payables. We only pay interim dividends in one year. So final dividends will not be paid. So whenever you see shareholders for dividends and trade and other payables, you must just know that it is final. Because interim dividends, what do we do with interim dividends? We pay and declare. Remember when one of you guys' uh, parents went to Mrs. Atri and said, I'm wasting time on um, WhatsApp because I'm asking you questions. I wonder whose parent that is. But it's fine. Um, I'm wasting time when I asked you questions and I was asking you questions like, what is the difference between interim dividends and final dividends? It's because I knew in cash flow it's important. <laughs> yeah, it made me angry because I'm asking those questions on WhatsApp and then Judy gets an SMS from a parent that says, I'm not doing anything in accounting. I'm like, what the heck? I wish I knew who the parent is so that I can ask that child now, what is interim dividend? Because that is very important for me to understand. Yes, it's minus. And then you're going to minus your final, your total dividends for this year. Your total dividends for this year will simply be this year's interim dividends plus this year's final dividends. It's simply this year's interim dividends plus this year's final dividends. You add them together, but you subtract them. What about this year's final dividends? Yes, they will be paid next year. So we're going to add it back for this year because we're not paying it this year. We're just going to pay it next year. Hence, I asked you in those WhatsApp messages, I said, in one year, we only pay two dividends. What are they? It's last year's final plus this year's interim. That's it. Yes. Yeah, it's still fine. It's still fine. No. Um. I actually prefer to do it this way. The reason why I prefer to do it this way is because while well, I've been teaching accounting for a while now, and I realized that when you put it as plus, in your mind, guys, it comes here as what? As a plus. So just because you wrote it as a plus in brackets, you write it as a plus over there. And what are we talking about here? We're talking about what? Dividends paid. It cannot be a plus. That's why I prefer for you to write it as a minus in brackets to show that even when you take it to the uh, final column, it still has to be a minus. Yes. One seven three is your interim dividend. Yeah, um. Oh. Okay, my papers are just mixed up now. Yes? What? Yes, we added. Um, we would have added it, but in this case, there was no point in adding it back. Yes, that's 63,000. You're talking about number three. Yeah, but that is repayment. Repayment, we're going to get to that later on. Yes. One, five, seven, seven, eight. 
five seven five. five yes, seven, it is this year's final. You asked me about one seventy three. No, no. It is this year's final. When will it be paid? That's why I'm getting it back. And then when it comes to taxation, guys, when you were to say um, operating activities is difficult. Seven five zero. When it comes to taxation, guys, when it comes to operating activities under cash flow, the only thing that I can say to you, I forgive you if you think it's difficult, is only taxation because taxation is so unpredictable. And you need to pay attention, especially in your test. That's why you made a mistake. I wrote SARS income tax, and then in brackets I wrote DR. What does DR stand for? Ah, wait, ten guys. It's David. DR stands for David. If your SARS income tax is on the David side, where does it go? No, where does it go? There's trade and other payables and trade and other receivables. David. It's receivables. If it's on the David, it's receivables. If you remember very well when we did that, guys, I said to you, if we owe SARS, it is a liability. On which side do your liabilities increase? Credit side. That's why the definitions are very important. That's why I ask you those definitions in grade 10. If it's a liability, it increases on the credit side. In this case, if it's on the debit side, it is trade and other receivables. Now let's check here. My papers are now mixed up, so I don't know what's going on. Okay, there it is. Um, where do we find SARS for 2016? Sorry. For 2016, SARS income tax, where is it? SARS income tax. SARS income, income tax. It's by receivables. For when? When is 2016? It's last year. What is receivables? They owe us. Now this year, what are they supposed to do with that money? They're supposed to give it to us. So when I put it here, would I put it as a plus or a minus? Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> and then South income tax that comes from the income statement you just subtracted. Where's South income tax for this year? It is in trade and other payables. Ask yourself one question. If it's in trade and other payables, what does it mean? We owe it. So when are we going to pay? And where, where are we right now? So meaning that for this year, we're not paying it. You just add it. Common sense. Please go and rewatch the video. I'll also post this one again. Um, okay.